God's word. And for those that can stand, will you stand for the reading of God's word? Brother Lee Carpenter will lead us in the scripture reading. In reading this morning, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. And it reads, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. That's right. That's Proverbs 30 and 5. The God of the blessing to the readers, hears the noise of his word. Amen. 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 You may be seated. At this time, may we pray. I want to start my prayer off this morning thanking God for our lives, our health, and our strength. And I want to ask you a question. Have you thought about what God has done for you lately? Yes. Have you thought about the things that he brought you through lately? Yes. Do you thank God for what he do for you? Or do you even see it? Sometimes we have to open our eyes and realize the blessings that God has given us. Yes. He gave us life. Yes. Yes. Father God, we thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We thank you for life, health, and strength. And Lord, we, we, we see what you're doing for us. We're alive today. We know that it's you that kept us alive, your grace and your mercy that keep us going. And we ask you today, Lord. We thank you for blessing those that are following you, Lord, today. We ask you, Lord, to bless the sinner man not knowing you in, in accordance of his own heart today, Lord. We ask that he receive you today, Lord, again. We ask you to look in on the sick and the shed in today, Lord. We ask you to look in on those that are broken hearted, that lost loved ones, Father. We ask you to stop by their homes and look in on them today. Look in on their hearts, their minds, their bodies, and their soul, Lord. And we just thank you for keeping us safe up and down the highways of life. Every time we turn the TV on, it's bad news. We ask you to bless this world that you've given to us, Lord. If it be your will, we ask you to bless our nation, our capital, our leaders, Lord, in this in this country that we live in, Lord. We ask you to look in on them today, Lord, if it be your holy will. We just ask you to bless this day. Thank you for the sun that's shining, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for that. It's beautiful and we love it. And we ask you to be with us today as we go through this day. Keep us safe. Keep us holy, Lord, if it be your holy will today, Lord. And we know it, it is your will. We thank you for all that you do for us. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all Because I know, I know 
as we always end this part of our session in Christ, I always say to you, today is a good day to help somebody. Yeah. And today, people need you more than ever before. Yeah. We need Christ today. Yeah. Right. And through Christ, people need people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So today is a good day to call somebody that's sick or shut in or stop by their house. We all, I always say, we all have more than we can use. Yeah. Some of us have more than we need. Yeah. Share with somebody today. Today's a good day to share with somebody. All right. There's people that I know and you know personally yes, that's home laying in bed or home sitting in a recliner that can't get out of their house. Amen. Stop by and give them a word today. Amen. Give them a telephone call because everybody got a cell phone nowadays. Give them a phone call and tell them that you're thinking about them and ask them if it's something that they need that you can help them with. The people need us today. That's right. People need us more than ever. People are in need today. People need food. People need a word. People need love. People All right. need care. Yes, sir. Today is a good day. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, brothers. Good morning, St. Paul. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to say good morning to those that are watching by way of Facebook and YouTube. We thank God for you tuning in to this service. There is a song. It's a repeat song. You know, whatever I say, to some degree, y'all, you have to just say it like I said it. Amen. Amen. Uh, I was listening to it. B.B. Um, Wine singing a song everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Right. Amen. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. He is the fairest of ten thousands. Everybody ought to know. Y'all gonna sing it with me? Yes, sir. Amen. So something like this. Actually, when I say it, you just repeat it after me. Everybody ought to know everybody ought to know who Jesus is who Jesus is who Jesus is everybody ought to know Oh. 
Caesarea Philippi asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? Right now. They said, some say that you're John the Baptist. Yes, some that say that you're Elijah the prophet. Some say that you're the other prophet that God spoke about. But he says, but who do you say that I am? All right. And Peter, being inspired by the Holy Spirit, yeah. said, you are the Christ. Yeah. You are the son of the living God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Do you know who Jesus is? Yeah. And I'm not just talking about on pages of scripture. I'm not talking about what Big Mama told you. Right. But do you know Jesus for yourself? Yeah. Amen. I'm glad I know yes, sir. who Jesus is. Amen. 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 It's all about a personal relationship with the Lord. Amen. 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 You don't get in because you're in proximity of Jesus. All right. All right. <laughs> you don't get in because of a relationship with others who know Jesus. Amen. You got to know Jesus for yourself. Amen. Everybody ought to know. Now, that's where we come in at. It's the church's responsibility to tell people who Jesus Amen. is. Amen. Amen. And we're going to celebrate the Lord. Amen. The psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth so that my soul may make her boast in the Lord. And the humble will hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Yes, sir. And let us, yes, the church, the body of Christ, the believers, exalt his name together. We want to thank God for you coming and being here with us today Amen. as we celebrate who Jesus is. Amen. The choir is going to come at this time. We render some selection and then we'll come back with the word for today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. When I think about all the good things that the, that the Lord has done for me. And just to say, I don't know how blessed I am. Amen. 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 When I think of all the good things that are happening to me, thank you all. Thank you. 
ain't nothing. You ain't got Jesus. All the blessings he give us on the daily basis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You don't know how blessed you are. How blessed, how blessed you are. You don't know how blessed you are. How blessed, how blessed you are. You don't know how blessed you are. How blessed, how blessed. Oh!
Stand to your feet yeah. and you yeah. clap your hands, yeah. even if you didn't vote it for them. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. That's just the respect that we give to uh, the leader of our nation. Yeah. Yeah. And how much more so are we to give God praise? Amen. Yeah. The best praise, the highest praise. Yeah. And oftentimes we give a better praise to man yeah. than we give yeah. to God. Amen. Yeah. And we need to change the way we praise God. Yeah. I think that your highest form of gratitude yes, ought to be expressed when you come to church. Yeah. Amen. 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 You ought to be so, you know, you know how it is, when, Reverend, when you um, give your grandbabies all that sugar and their candy yeah. <laughs> and they just bounce around and can't be still. That's the way we ought to be when we come to church on Sunday. Amen. Just bouncing around with the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Amen. Giving God the highest gratitude yes, for who he is. I heard this, you know, I, I go to Facebook to check our page, and then uh, there's a, a section on Facebook, and it has a little TV that says watch. Y'all y'all ever go to those videos and watch? It may have a lot of gospel singles and things on it. And one of the, um, the lady preachers, uh, she was invited to the potter's house, and I don't know when she was. It might have been last year for Mother's Day, previous right. years. But she said, y'all, I didn't get a new car. I didn't get a new house. But God is still good. He's still worthy to be praised. Amen. And oftentimes we reserve praise when we get stuff. But the psalmist says, I will bless the Lord. You miss your moment. <laughs> but I will bless the Lord. At all times. His praise shall continually. Whether I get a new house, a new car, a new boo. His praise still ought to be in your mouth. Amen. So that your soul make his boast in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to invite you to turn to the New Testament. We're still in the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul, the first letter that is recorded. Um, there were other letters that Paul wrote to the church, but this is the first letter um, that was received uh, that has been um, uh, preserved for us in the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Yes, sir. We want you to turn, and we've been looking at 
uh, Paul final uh, words of instruction. Paul, Paul giving his final uh, plans of what his uh, future plans look like uh, before he come and visit the church in Corinth. 1 Corinthians 16 verses 15 and 18 will be our focal verses today uh, that we'll turn our attention to. Uh, and so when you have that, please stand to your feet out of respect for the reading of God's word. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. This is, again, message number 46 from the series Order in the Church. Amen. Message 16. And this is a three-part uh, message, uh, a mini-series in that series. Uh, this is entitled The Pastor's Helper, Part 3. Yeah. But in 1 Corinthians 16, 15 through 18, through the, the New Living Translation, it says, You know that Stephanus and his household were the first of the harvest of believers in Greece. And they are spending their lives in service to God's people. I urge you, dear brothers and sisters, to submit to them and others like them who serve with such devotion. I am very glad that Stephanus, Fortunatus, and Achaicus have come here. They have been providing the help you weren't here to give me. They have been a wonderful encouragement to me, as they have been to you. You must show your appreciation to all who serve so well, look at your neighbors and neighbor. The preacher's going to preach about the pastor's helpers. Bless those who bless you. Amen. I'm talking about the pastor's helpers. Now. Bless those who bless you. Father God, we come. We thank you right now for an opportunity to dove into the word of God because faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of God. And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? And how beautiful are the feet of the preacher. Right. Yeah. The preacher carries good news. The salvation of God, which is found in the scriptures through faith in Jesus Christ. There is good news in the world full of bad news. And we pray that we will receive the good news of God's salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, who hung, bled, and died for the sins of, world, of the world was buried in Joseph's new tomb. But bright early, three days later, on Sunday morning, Jesus rose from the dead so that you and I, sinners, may be reconciled to God through his death. And therefore, we have been made right with God through the death of his son. And Father, we pray today that someone will seriously consider their need to be saved. Jesus told Nicodemus, Marvel not, I say to you, you must be born again. No one can see the kingdom of God except he be born again. And we pray today for the salvation of souls that are lost. Give them the faith to believe. And help me by the aid of your spirit to rightly and accurately handle the word of truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, ushers, for serving this morning. But I want to talk about the pastor's helpers, part three. Yes, and bless those who bless you or those who have been a blessing to you. Now, brothers and sisters, in chapter 16 of 1 Corinthians, the apostle Paul has been sharing with the Corinthian church his future ministry plan. Now look back at verses 5 through 9. He says, I, I am coming to visit you after I have been to Macedonia. For I am planning to travel through Macedonia. Perhaps I will stay a while with you, possibly all winter. And then you can send me on my way to my next destination. This time I don't want to make just a short visit and then go right on. I want to come and stay a while, if the Lord will let me. In the meantime, I will be staying here at Ephesus until the festival of Pentecost, 
There is a wide open door for a great work here, although many oppose me. And so Paul is letting the church of Corinth know what his future ministry plans look like. In verses 5 through 9, he also highlights those who have what helped him in the gospel ministry. First, he mentions that Timothy would soon be coming to them, and he wanted them, amen, to count his spiritual son in the faith and instruct the church on how they are to handle and receive Timothy if he comes to visit them in Corinth. Look at verse 10. And 11, he says, when Timothy comes, don't intimidate him. He's doing the Lord's work just as I am. Yes, don't let anyone treat him with contempt. Send him on his way with your blessing when he returns to me. I expect him to come with the other believers. And so Paul now is addressing the future arrival of Timothy, his son in the ministry, his son in the gospel faith, and he's reminding the church of how they are to treat Timothy. Amen. Treat him, amen, amen, handle him with care, treat him with respect, amen, because Timothy is coming back to me. As an equal servant of God, Paul told the church to encourage Timothy. Yes, See to it that he may be with you without fear. In other words, don't intimidate the man of God. He's young. He's timid. Amen. He's a little fearful at times, but don't intimidate my son. Yeah. Because why he does the same work that I am doing in the Lord. But send him on his journey in peace. Paul writes. Second, the second helper that Paul mentions here in the text is that of Apollos. Look at verse 12. Now about our brother Apollos, I urge him to visit you with the other believers. But he was not willing to go right now. He will see you later when he has the opportunity. I told you that uh, Apollos was the reluctant helper. Things had to work out. Things had to be just in the right time for Apollos, amen, to come and visit with them. So Paul is encouraging them, amen, I want you, amen, not to intimidate my son Timothy. But also Paul encouraged the church to be patient and waiting for Apollos to come and see them. Encourage Timothy, but I want you to be patient with Apollos. Right. See, people in the church need different things because we're in different relationships and we're in different walks when our relationship with God. Timothy need encouragement. Uh -huh. And there are maybe there are some of you right now, you're a little timid about doing God's work. And so you need to be treated like something precious. Okay. Amen. Okay. Like fine china. Okay. Amen. Because uh, the songwriter said, don't push me. Because I'm close to the edge. <laughs> y'all know, y'all, we have people just like that in church that they're a little timid, and if you, amen, push them too hard, they'll go right off the edge. And Paul's saying, I want you, when Timothy comes, I want you to be, amen, respectful toward him. I want you, amen, to be loving toward him. But when, amen, when, when Apollos makes up his mind to come, I just want y'all to be patient with him. Amen. There are people, amen, that are gifted in the body of Christ. Amen. But you got to keep on pushing them, keep on pushing them toward their destiny. In other words, Paul says, encourage Timothy, but I want you to be patient with Apollos. Right. Because when the time is right, he will come to see you. Yeah. And while they anticipated the visits from Timothy and Apollos, yeah. Paul encourages the entire congregation at Corinth. First of all, he says, I want you to be alert because that's what he says to them on what verse 13. Be on guard. Yes. Stand firm in the faith. Yes. Be courageous. Be strong and do everything in love. And so now he's talking to the entire church body. He says, I want you as a church to be alert, 
I want you to be firm. I want you to be mature. That is, be men, act like men. I want you to be strong. I want you to be courageous. And I want you to be loving toward one another. Then in verses 15 through 19, Paul picks back up with the theme of the pastor's helpers. Those men and women who have what ministered with him and to him. People like Stephanus in verse 15 and 16, Fortunatus and Achaicus in verse 17, and then he mentions Aquila and Priscilla, a married couple, in verse 19, he resumes talking about the pastor's helpers, those who have been dear and near to him in the gospel ministry. These were believers who laid it all on the line for Jesus all right. and for the apostle Paul. Today we want to focus in on Stephanus and Fortunatus and what Paul advised the church on how to treat these servants of God. Warren Wigsby in his Bible commentary on 1 Corinthians 16, verses 10 through 24 wrote, the church's greatest asset is people. Uh -huh. Amen. And yet too often the church takes people for granted. Paul had invested time in Timothy and Timothy became a great man of God. Likewise, the Apostle Paul and the Apollos both ministered to the believers in Corinth. And he encouraged Apollos to return back to Corinth again because he knew Apollos would be a blessing to the church. Paul had invested in Apollos. Paul had invested in Timothy. The precious resource of the church are people. People need to be invested in. Paul had also invested in Stephanus and his household. For Paul states in verse 15, look at verse 15. I urge you, brothers and sisters, you know that the household of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, that is, the first of the harvest of believers in Greece. And they are spending their lives in service to God's people. Y'all see it? Paul said there are some people in your church, Stephanus and Fortunatus, and their household who have committed their lives to Christ and have committed to serving God's people. Right. Is that said of your household? That your household is committed to serving God's people? You know, there's a difference between serving the church and serving God's people. See, we service, amen, come to service on Sunday, but we service people when we leave the church. Amen, amen somebody. Amen. Ain't nobody up in here hungry. Ain't nobody up in here, amen, dying and need somebody to visit and pray for them. Ain't nobody in here lying in a hospital bed. Amen. But we come up in here, amen, and we give praise and glory to God, and then we get empowered to go back to the world. But what we want to do, we want to sit soaking sour in the church, but then we don't minister to nobody when we leave the church. These people had what? Committed their lives to serving God's people. Not conducting a service, but serving God's people. Yes, sir. Stephanus and his family were the first people to be won to Christ in Achaia. And the Apostle Paul had personally baptized them according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 16, where it says, Paul speaking, yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Acts 18 records Paul's ministry in Corinth. That he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, that is on the Saturday, and he persuaded both Jews and Greeks, and from there he entered the house of a certain man named Justice, one who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. When they ran Paul out of the church, he went next door to a house and still ministered to people. See, the greatest work that you do for the body of Christ and for people is outside the church. Yeah. Right. When they ran Paul out of the church, 
You know, there will be people who will get right out of church. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 If you don't cater to what they want you to do and what you want to say, if you talk about sin too long, they can run you up out of here. Amen. Because all they want is some church. <laughs> but don't you know that the word church means ecclesia, which means called out once, called out of sin. We've been called out of the world, called out of darkness, called out of sin, called to serve God, and called to go into a dying world and tell that world there is a Savior whose name is Jesus. Yes. They ran Paul out of the church. He said, y'all can have y'all in church. I'll go next door and I'll set up church All right. in a house. Yes, because Jesus says, where there's two or three gathered yes, together in my right. name, right. I'm in the midst. And we seem to think that the only time Jesus is with us is when we come to this building with four walls. But Jesus said, where there's two or three to gather together in my name, that's the church, that's the body of Christ, that's the ecclesia. Not this building, but the people of God. All right. They ran Paul out of the church. The Bible says he entered at the house of a certain man named Justice. Yes. One who worshipped God because they didn't want to worship the true living God at the church. All, right. All they wanted was religion at the church. Right. Singing, glad I got religion. <laughs> But they didn't want to worship Jesus, who was the son of the living God. So Paul took the church to the house, right. to Justice House, one who worshiped God, whose house was next door to the church. Then Christmas, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord. Notice that the ruler of the synagogue had to leave the church in order to see Jesus. The man who what? A man who was the head of the church was not saved. Don't you know you got unsaved folks in church? Deacons and preachers. Sunday school teachers. Choir members and ushers. In the church. But they don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Notice that the synagogue ruler left his own church building, heard Paul in the house, and got saved. Yeah. Ain't that something? You would think that folks would come to church to get saved. But if the church ain't living right, if the church ain't letting their light shine before men so that men may see our good works, Sometimes you got to meet folks outside the church to meet Jesus. Tell you, they're all oh, that's a shame. A low down, dirty shame. That you can't find Jesus in the church. Amen. Revelation 3 and 20, Jesus standing at the door of the church saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone would hear my voice and let me in my own church, I will come in and sit with them. And they with me. Notice this. Ain't that something? That you, God just showed me that. That ain't in my notes. Amen. Christmas, who was the head of the synagogue, had to go to a house church to find Jesus. Yes. Because there are people stuck on religion. Come on now. This is the way we always done. All right. Paul says, okay, y'all can have y'all at church. All right. Because Jesus lives in me. Right. Come on, man. The hope of glory lives in me. <laughs> Jesus said, I won't leave you as orphans. I will send the paraclete, the helper. Yes. And he will live in you. Not only did justice get saved, not only did Christmas, the synagogue ruler, get saved, the Bible says in Acts 18, verse 8, and many of the Corinthians hearing, believed and were baptized. All right. Between Paul preaching in the synagogue and his preaching at Justice House, mm -hmm. Stephanus and his household heard the gospel because faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of God. Not only did they hear the gospel, but they believed the gospel. Yes. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus 
and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. See, you can hear the gospel, but you got to believe the gospel. And after you believe the gospel that you hear, you can be baptized. Yeah, yeah. So between the synagogue and Paul preaching in the house church, the Bible says, and many of the Corinthians, but her hearing, believe. And after being believing the Bible, hearing the word of God, the Bible says they were baptized. Right. And they became followers of Jesus Christ. You see, the gospel can save not only individuals, but it can save entire households. Amen. Paul says that the entire household of Stephanas got saved. Yes. Listen to what the Apostle Peter says when he proclaims the first message preached by the church on the day of Pentecost. He says in Acts 2, 38, verse 39, Peter says, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission that is for the forgiveness of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is to you individually and to your children and to all who are far off as many as the Lord our God will call. Y'all see it? In other words, not only does God want to save you individually, but God wants to save your entire household. All right. Amen. What a joy and what a blessing it is to see families come to Jesus. But don't you know Jesus said your own, your, in your own family you will have enemies? Mothers will be against daughters, daughters against mothers, daughter-in-laws against mother-in-laws, sons against fathers, fathers against sons. He said your enemy will be in your own household, but not Stephanus household. The Bible says that when Stephanus heard the gospel being preached by Paul in the city of Corinth, he believed as well as his household. Are you just satisfied in being saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that was fire, and on your way to heaven, and everybody else in your house is going to hell? Leave your children in the bed. Leaving your husband and your wife in the bed. Leaving your nieces and your nephews in the bed. But not Stephanus. Stephanus' whole household got saved under the preaching ministry of the Apostle Paul. Again, what a joy and what a blessing it is to see family saved and in service to God. Amen. And such was the household of Stephanus. Well, Paul states of them in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 15b, and they, and they have devoted themselves, that is the whole household of Stephanus, right. to the ministry of the saints. The whole uh, family got saved, and the whole family devoted themselves to ministering to the people yeah. of God. Yeah. And I'm sure not all of them served in the same capacity. Some probably were choir members, some probably were ushers, some were probably reading, amen, leading Sunday school, some were probably teachers, some were probably preachers. In other words, they all had different responsibilities, but they were all ministering to the saints of God. Right. It says Stephanus and his family were committed to serving God by serving God's people. Yeah. You know the word deacon means servant. Y'all know that, don't you? Yeah. The word is diakonos, which means servant, which means minister. In other words, we are ministers of Jesus Christ. In other words, it's not something that we just carry out, amen, in front of the church on Sunday morning, but we minister to people wherever they are. So upon this asshole, minister to the saints of God. They minister to God's people. They stepped up and met the needs of God's people. Amen. When someone has been called by God to minister to his people, the church, and when they are in a family, amen, amen, the family, amen, should work tirelessly to meet the needs of hurting people. All right. You know, my wife is a great gift, not only to this church, but to me. Amen. 
and to others in the community. Wherever she goes, she's trying to help people, Amen. right? Amen. Her ministry does not stop on Sunday morning. Amen. She's meeting knees after knees on her job. In fact, she drove all the way to Pittsburgh yesterday to minister to the needs of a family who had lost a loved one. This lady lived in the facility where my wife works, and she drove all the way to Pittsburgh to love on that family. Meeting the needs of people. There are people, brothers and sisters, who are hurting. There are people, brothers and sisters, who are suffering. We need to pray for them. We need to visit with them. And amen, then we're there to give to God's people. How should the church respond to such leaders that God has given to the church? The Bible says Stephanus and his whole household, Fortunatus and Achaicus, they had committed themselves to serving God's people. Now, the question is, how should the church respond to those whom God has called to meet the needs of his people? The Apostle Paul first says, the first thing you ought to do is you ought to submit to them. Tell your neighbor, submit to your church leadership. Do you find it hard to submit to church leadership? So when the pastor says, hey, can I get you to do such and such? Will you go and be available to help me do this? Will you go out to do this? Do you look around and say, well, pastor, can you send somebody else? Paul said the first thing that the church should do to those who are in church leadership that is a gift from God. Your, your pastors and your ministers are, amen, gifts from God. And Paul said the first thing that you can do is show, submit to them. He says that in verse 16. Now, brothers and sisters, the word submit in the Greek is hupatasso. Hupatasso, which means to arrange under. In other words, it's not saying that your preachers and your leaders and your deacons are more superior than you. It means that you're just coming under their leadership. The word means, amen, to come under the rank of. It's just like in a military, you have soldiers, then you have sergeants, then you have what, lieutenants, then you have captains, then you have majors. Is that right? In other words, they all come under the leadership of one another. No soldier is more important than any other. They just have different responsibilities. Is that right, somebody? And so the word means to arrange under. It means to be subject to. It means to submit to one's control or advice. It means to obey. It means to be subject to. For example, the same word submit is found in Romans 13, verse 1, is the word to be subject to when Paul says we are to submit to the government. Now, brothers and sisters, it's nearing tax time, ain't it? Amen. I think they've given us an extended deadline to what, April the 18th to file your taxes this year. The Bible asked a question one time, shall we render to Caesar <clears throat> the things that belong to Caesar? And Jesus said, render to Caesar those things that belong to Caesar. And he said, then give to God those things that belong to God. And so Paul is saying the same word, submit, which is found here in Amen, in, in, in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 16, is the same word that we find in Romans 13, verse 1, when it speaks of being subjected. Amen to the governmental officials because the Bible says all authority has been ordained by God. The same God, amen, amen, who calls us to be submissive to the government and places people in authority in the government over us is the same God who is over the church. And he commands the church to be subject to his spiritual leaders. Do you know what happens when you don't pay your taxes to the government? <clears throat> they audit you first, don't they? Yeah. And then they give you opportunities to pay your taxes. And then if you don't pay your taxes, you'll end up like Wesley Snipes. Well. <laughs> Just because he thought he was a millionaire and that he was a superstar and that he did movies and things like that. Wesley said, I'm going to have to pay my taxes. 
Well, things happen like that. You go to jail. We don't have church jails. We don't have spiritual police saying who's submitted and who's not submitted to the church leadership. But God knows and you know. And notice this, brothers and sisters. Ephesians 5, 21 says, submitting to one another in the fear of God. It goes on to say in that same text, wives, be submissive to your own husbands. It also says, submitted to one another in the fear of God. First Peter 5, verse, First Peter 5, verse 5 says, likewise, you younger people in the church, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey those who rule over you, and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls. As those who must give an account, let them do so with joy, not with grief, for that would be unprofitable to you. So when you have an unsubmissive spirit to church leadership, you're not hurting the leadership, you're hurting yourself. It said it's of no profit to you. Amen. Yes, sir. The leadership of the church shouldn't have to beg Christians to serve God. Amen. The Bible says, be submissive for they watch out for your souls as those who must give an account to God of how they watch over your souls. Let them do so with joy. Y'all yeah. see? With joy. Amen. You are not to be a burden to your church leadership. You are to be the ones that cause them to have much joy. Yeah. The pastor ought to be glad to come to church on Sunday and meet with the saints. Yes, the story was told a mother knocked on a door of a young man sleeping in the bedroom. Son, it's time to get up. Son, it's time for you to get up. He said, Mama, I don't feel like getting up. <laughs> Let them do so with joy, not with grief, for that would be unprofitable to you. The pastors and elders of the church exercise the very authority of Christ when they preach, teach, and apply scripture, Pastor John MacArthur says. They serve the church on behalf of Christ and must give an account of their faithfulness. And the church's responsibility is to help its leaders to do their work with satisfaction, yes, delight, and with great joy. The preacher is accountable to God. And guess what? And so is the assembly accountable to God. Paul says, first of all, I want you to be subject to your leaders. Right. Then he says, second, I want you to respect and value your leaders. Paul valued men like Stephanus. Now, Stephanus' name means crowned. Fortunatus name means well freighted or fortunate. And Achaia's name means belonging to Achaia. That's where he came from. But Paul said, not only are you to what? Respect your leaders, submit to your leaders. I want you to respect them and value them. According to 1 Corinthians 17 and 18, Paul valued men like Stephanus. Fortunatus and Achaicus. These men helped Paul when the Corinthians could not. Paul said, these men bridged the gap for you. Paul says, when you couldn't come and assist me and help me, these men sent by from your church bridged the gap. Notice this, brothers and sisters. He says, these men helped me. He says, when you could not help me as a church, and they strengthened me right. as a leader. Don't you know that even the pastors need pastors to strengthen them? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Don't you know we need people that's going to pour into us? Paul says, these men strengthen me on your behalf. The pastor gets weary in service. Amen. And he needs somebody to come alongside me and say, man, I'll be your strength. Remember when Moses and the nation of Israel were in battle? Moses went up on the top of the hill, didn't he? Yes, and he had two other men yes. holding up his arms. Uh -huh. Is that right? And the Bible says when Moses' arms got tired, they were losing. But when they propped Moses' arms up, they won the battle. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Will you be someone who helps Pat prop up the preacher? Mm hmm Y'all know we got problems at home. Amen. Y'all know we still get short on money too. Y'all right. know we got folks that we bury too, don't you? Yes. Like yesterday buried my sister-in-law's grandmother. Right. And we had to go to that field to prop them up. My question is, who's propping up the preachers in your church? Right. Who's coming alongside to be, amen, say, I got you, pastor. Right. You get tired sometimes. I'll take that responsibility. Who do he have to prop him up? Amen. These men helped Paul when the Corinthians couldn't, for well, they had to strengthen Paul uh -huh. in his spirit, as well as the saints in the Corinthians. These men were of double value. Yes. They strengthened the Corinthian church, and then they strengthened Paul as well. The Paul, the church is to value and respect their leaders for who they are in Christ. Yes, Sometimes our we clash in church, don't we? Uh -huh. There may be things I say that you don't like. Come on, there are things that your boss on the job say you don't like. Right. But you don't walk off your job. So why do you walk out of church when the preacher says something you don't like? There could be things that God reveals through the Spirit that you don't like. But you ought to value and respect church leadership. I'm talking about men who live what they preach. I'm not talking about men who talk about be faithful to your wife and then they got a boo and a honey on the side. I'm not talking about men who tell you to pay your tithes and they don't pay tithes themselves. I'm not talking about folks who are talking about it. You need to go and visit the sick and ain't visit nobody in six months. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. The church is to value and respect their leaders for who they are in Christ. And then we need to value them for the work that they do. I close out with this. 1 Timothy 5, 17 says, Let the elders, that is the church leaders, who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word, and doctrine. Yes. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Uh -huh. And the laborers are worthy of its wages. Uh -huh. right. Right. In other words, your pastor ought not to have to beg for a raise. Right. Right. You ought to take care of the man of God. Uh -huh. Because the man of God is taking care of you spiritually. Yes. He's feeding you the word of God. He's telling you what God says. And based on what he tells you from the word of God, the Bible says "And those who would labor in the word of God are to be counted worthy of double, double honor. Yeah. And Paul paints the picture that when it's harvest time, they take an ox and they yoke oxes together and they put them, and they chain them together, and then there's a grinding mill. And then they take that ox and make that ox, amen, walk around in a circle as he grinds the mill, but the ox gets to eat some of the things that he's grinding. Amen. 
Do you show double honor to those who labor in word and in doctrine as a leader? In other words, God says, I want you to bless those who become a blessing to you. So Paul is saying that Stephanus, Fortunatus, and Achaicus, they're great men of God, and you have to submit to those like them and others who serve in their same capacity. Submit to your leadership. Then he says, I want you to show respect and value to those who lead. Bless the one that God uses to bless you by submitting to their authority, Value and respect them for who they are and for the work that they do for the Lord. The pastors help us. Bless those who bless you. Father God, we come, we thank you today for your word. For Paul highlighting men like Timothy and Apollos, Stephanus and his household, Fortunatus and Achaicus. And then he goes on to talk about Aquila and Priscilla and the ministry that they have yeah. in their home. We thank you for serving leaders of the church. You gave us all different gifts, and those gifts are to be employed on behalf of the church to help build up and strengthen the church so the church may walk in a spirit of unity and in a spirit of love. We pray, God, that you have not only uh, just give us ears to hear, but give us a heart to obey. In Jesus' name, amen. And maybe you want to respond. Maybe you say, well, I haven't been uh, respectful. I haven't been submissive. I haven't valued my church leadership. And Paul says you ought to value such people. And maybe you need to respond to the gospel. You're not saying, you go to church, but you're not saved. You don't have a born-again relationship with Christ. Today is a day that you can confess your sins to God and say, God, I'm a sinner, but I believe the gospel. I believe that Jesus died for me, that my sins were placed upon Jesus over 2,000 years ago at Calvary's cross. He gave his innocent life for my sinful life. And I want my sins forgiven. I want to go to heaven someday, but I want to live a new life on earth yeah. while I'm here. Father God, I pray for those who are watching by Facebook and YouTube and those who are in the sanctuary. Lord, I pray that you have spoken to their hearts. Give them the faith to believe that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of the living God. And in response, they should pray, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Make me a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. You say that I am your shepherd. Why would you follow in me? This is Jesus. You say that you are my sheep. Why would you follow with me when my sheep hear my voice? They come run into me, run into me, and you say, I am your shepherd. Why won't you follow with me? I told to love one another, even their enemies too. When you see someone who's naked, use your wool to cover their skin, and you. You say that I am your shepherd. Why would you follow in me? You say that you are my sheep. 
Why won't you follow in me? I told my sheep to visit, to sing, and to take the stranger in. If you see someone who's naked, use your wool to cover their skin. And you say, I am your shepherd. Why aren't you following me? I told my sheep to love one another, even their enemies too. But you seem to have only love for those who have love for you. And you say, I am your shepherd. Why aren't you following me? Amen. Jesus said, if you are my sheep, follow me. Amen. 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 At this time, brothers and sisters, the doors of the church are open for your decision. And if not, we'll turn things over to the ushers to receive the Lord's. Offering. Amen. Amen. You are now under the hands of the ushers. Walk with me. 